Hi everyone, uh, today let's talk about Coder, give you a 101 in 15 minutes. My name is Tim Quinlan, I'm a senior marketing manager here at Coder. One of the main things I do in, in my job is go around and give talks to folks just like you. It's the favorite part of my job, so uh, let's get started. Just some logistics about this presentation. Typically this is a 45 minute talk, so I'm going to be going through these slides pretty quickly. Um, the, the talk is focused on our open source offering. However, I will mention our enterprise offering as well, just to set some differentiation. I won't have time for demos, but I do have some detailed screen, screenshots that show you what we're doing. And there are a couple of different methods you can use to install Coder. I have them linked right here. The first one is our quick install. That'll allow you to install it directly on your laptop, uh, run a local control plane, or uh, there's options on there to install with Docker, uh, or well, to install with a package and, and deploy with Docker. And then also there's our uh, link to our Helm chart as well, uh, where if, if you uh, want to do Kubernetes, you can do that. So Coder, the company, what are we or who are we? We're a 100% open source software provider. Um, everything we do is open source, even our enterprise features. We release that stuff under the AGPL, so uh, it does offer some protections. Uh, we are based in Austin, Texas. We have <clears throat> quite a few repos on GitHub. Uh, it's github.com slash coder. I checked this morning, we were at 185 repos and it's always going up. Uh, we've been around for about seven years and the software has been GA since 2020, so about four years. <clears throat> and we're always hiring, so check out our careers page. Right now we have a couple of uh, uh, openings for full stack engineers. I mentioned that we do have uh, a paid offering. I mean, we need to make money somehow, right? We can't just give everything away. Um, larger companies really like this, th these offerings because, um, or excuse me, the features that are included with this offering, uh, because it helps once you, once you get past a certain scale, once you get a, past about a hundred users or so, um, you know, there's a lot more compliance and, 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 uh, governance concerns at that scale. So, um, the enterprise, offering has things like RBAC, HA, cost controls, auditing, and of course it comes with support. Uh, the big companies really like that as well. So that's it for, for uh, enterprise. Let's get back to the open source stuff. So what is Coder? Coder is a cloud development environment. So what's your next question? What's a CDE, <laughs> right? Uh, if you've never heard of CDEs, um, it's, it's a way to develop software in on cloud instances with declaratively defined workspaces and everything's hosted on the cloud resources everything stays up there no source code ever lands on the developer's hard drive um, there's efficiency gains and security gains by doing it that way so why coder our runtimes have moved to the cloud so let's get the devs up there as well um you know it's easy enough to, to say, oh, I, I can create something that's similar locally on my machine. Uh, it's close enough to prod, but it's not always representative of prod. Uh, with a CDE, you can define, oops, excuse me, you can define your um, your workspaces to be, you know, almost exactly like like your prod instances. Now this and it reduces a lot of time that's lost to setup and and maintenance of the development environment. Uh, it allows you to code securely on any device. As long as you have a browser, you can get an IDE and it's a standardized environment. So no matter how many workspaces you create from one template or how many different developers create workspaces from one template, they all get the exact same thing. So uh, our differentiators over our competitors, as I mentioned before, we're 100% open source, even the paid features. Um, we only release one binary and it has everything included in that binary. However, the enterprise features are locked. So if you deploy with open source and you decide at some point you want to upgrade to enterprise, all you do is get your key and plug it in and it unlocks the features. There's no redeployment or anything or reconfiguration. It's the same thing. We're self-hosted, which means you determine where you want your control plane and your workspaces and your data to live. Uh, it's not, you know, you're not relying on any SaaS provider. Or, or any service provider. Uh, we're multi-region and multi-cloud. Um, 
unlike some of the SaaS offerings, we can we can allow you to develop on whatever platform you want, whether it's a VM or a Docker container or a pod. Um, you can even have your control plane running on one cloud. Um, and as long as you can federate those IDs, you can deploy on another cloud. So for example, if you were, you know, at your limit on say, say you burned all your GKE uh, spend for the year, you can actually shift your pods over to another cloud where you may have some, some spend remaining. Uh, it works with most IDs and most source control as we'll see. Um, the, the homes are always persistent. If you're in Docker, uh, it does a Docker volume. If you're in a pod, it does a persistent volume. And uh, if it's a VM, well, they just they just stay on the VM, and it's fully supported, right? Even even the um, the open source version, you can still get community support. You can see our GitHub. You can put PRs in, file issues, uh, but our, our community guys are really good too on our Discord channel. So a couple of the problems and a couple of the solutions that Coder solves or Coder does, I guess. Uh, you know, we mentioned time loss to set up audits, patching, tooling, that all goes out the window when, when you're using a declarative workspace. Uh, you can onboard people the day they start. In fact, you can pre-onboard them. If you use an IDP, you can, you know, put them in the, um, put them, give them access to the application in, in the IDP, and then use Coder or have Coder authenticate against that application, and they're there, they're ready to go. Uh, it eliminates costly local compute. No longer do you have to give your developers, you know, massive machines with GPUs and whatever. Um, and like I said, as long as it has a browser, like a Chrome-based browser, it'll work. Uh, I've even done it on my iPad just to show people. Uh, the, the the code, the the code, and and all your IP stays in your cloud instance, so it stays in your control the whole time. And it, you know, we always joke about the it works on my machine problem. Coder really does solve that because it gives everybody a standardized environment. So here's uh, our architecture. It's pretty straightforward. Down the left, we have our users. They're either going to use a web IDE or a desktop IDE. The web IDE is going to get proxied to the control plane. The desktop IDE is going to go straight to the workspaces. Uh, initially, they get proxied, but uh, if the control plane determines that the connection between the workspace and the user is good enough, it'll graduate that connection to uh, point to point using WireGuard. And the control plane has an API that, you know, the, the, the web UI hits or are, are, are CLI hits, it's all the same. So it's all pretty, pretty standard. The workspaces, as I mentioned, you can run them on any platform and any any cloud provider, even you know internal. And then there's a data layer where we store everything, all our state and all the templates and everything like that in Postgres. But we rely on your container and your container registry, your images, um, your Git providers, things like that. We're not replacing any of that. So what does a template look like? Uh, from the admin side, the admins are the only people who are going to see these templates. The devs aren't. All right. The, the devs are going to say, hey, we need X, Y, Z, and the admins are going to enable it in the template. This one that I'm looking at right now is for a Docker-based workspace. And you can see uh, down the left side where that little file tree is, there's a Docker file and there's a main.tf. So we'll look at the Docker file. It's a standard Docker file. You can put whatever you want in here as long as you, you know, as long as it'll work, as long as it'll build. And um, when this workspace is deployed, it'll build an image if it's not there and serve that image out. Now you're not stuck with doing it this way. If you want to pull an image from your own container registry, go right ahead. Uh, we're not we're not going to force you to do it this way, but this is a really cool way to do it really quickly if you need to add a package or whatever. Then uh, there's the actual Terraform. Now we do provide Terraform starter templates for all the major providers. So you don't have to know how to really write Terraform. You just have to be able to read it and, and tweak it and hack it. Uh, this one uses the Coder startup script to install Airflow, right? So instead of baking it into the image, we can have it start at runtime. So it's a pretty slick way of doing it. And we'll take a look at that template later, or excuse me, that workspace later. We also offer community modules. Um, these are ways to enable different IDEs and, and different utilities. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, there, there's a whole lot of them on there. I'm not gonna go into every single one, but if you do look at one module, you'll see down at the bottom, you'll have a screenshot of what it looks like, and then they'll have the, the code that you need 
to enable that down at the bottom. And to use that, all you do is paste that in your template, as you can see right here uh, from lines uh, 12 to 16. Um, sorry, it's looking pretty small on my screen. Um, basically, you just paste that in the main context of your Terraform file, and it will do a runtime installation uh, very similar to what we saw with the startup script. Like it'll run, uh, it'll do a pip, and well, this one in particular will do a pip install. But uh, those are all open source, just like everything else we do. So you can always go to the registry page and look at the source code and see exactly what it's doing. So just to wrap up on the admin side, uh, empirical installs are bad. We have we offer a lot of different ways to install software declaratively. We can do the startup script, which we've looked at. Uh, you can do a coder script, which is similar to a startup script. However, uh, it, it's not a necessarily associated with just startup. If you have something that you need to run persistently throughout the, the, the life of the workspace, you can do a coder script. Um, modules, which we've talked about, the Docker file, which we've talked about, also your, your base image, if, if you want to pull your base image from your repo rather than have, uh, have coder build it, you know, that's fine too. And then we also support dev containers where basically you can start up a basic container point it to a Docker file, and then that will build itself and, and overlay itself onto the container that's running. That's a really cool way to give your devs uh, a really flexible environment. So what do, the, what do the devs see? When they first log into Coder, they're going to see the workspaces that they have built. If they haven't built any workspaces, you can see up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a Create Workspace button. They'll click on that. They'll pick the template they want, and away they go. So this user, well, this is me in my demo environment. I have a lot of different use cases enabled. Uh, let's take a look at my Airflow workspace. When I click on my Airflow workspace, this is all I see as a dev. I see a couple of buttons for some IDEs and for Airflow. That's it. There's no desktop. There's no SSH to this, connect to that. It's, it's all right here. It's just a few clicks. And if we if we open Code Server now, let me just preface that by saying Code Server's uh, Coder's open source implementation of VS Code in a browser, it's really handy. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that, and we'll take a look at what Airflow looks like as well. So here they both are. I, you know, one click, you open them up. Um, you can see I have a full full version of Airflow running on the left side, and if you look at my uh, VS Code in a browser, um, you can see that it's actually on a on a on the, the Linux file system that's that the um, that the workspace is running in, you can see it has has everything there, and and I even did a, a uname a uh, that shows that it is running on Linux, not on my MacBook. So, what makes a good coder deployment? Um, you know, everybody needs to be bought in. You want a small, focused core team who's really going to get it. Uh, you want to create common templates for your use cases, and you want your templates and, and your environment to work for both new and existing projects. But what makes a really great coder deployment is when leadership gets it and there's buy-in there. And it, it's also an easy way to integrate it with your kind of golden path for your software deployment. And when the, when the devs drive the template creation or bring their own dependencies. Now, that, that's when I said they're going to the admins and saying, hey, we need this, we need that, and then the admins enable it. Or they can use dev containers, too, if you want to let them. So as I mentioned before, we have a couple of different methods uh, to install. You can try a quick install, um, or you can try our Helm install. And in summary, we're a self-hosted cloud development environment. The de developers use consistent and familiar tools. The admins control the data and control the platform. The devs create the use cases, and the admins enable the use cases. The devs create the workspaces with a few clicks. Uh, we have an anti-pattern of empirical software install, and our patterns are declarative software install and idempotent startup. Um, I listed a few additional links here uh, for our blogs, webinars, quick install, and docs um, to cover a over a lot of the things I wasn't able to cover today. Here's all the contact info uh, about the company, about our Discord channels, and then my personal info as well. And with that, it's time for Q&A. Thank you.